easier. Uh, it's a path that, you know, helps you be able to live as a full-time artist. And for some, every artist is not their goal, but for people who that's their goal, it's, it's kind of one of the things you want to get to because it helps you with your path. So as far as me, I like, I need a couple of them a year to just help me stay in as a full-time artist. I was like, you know, I need at least 20 or $30,000 in funding. I don't need all of my money covered, but I need some of that money to help me, you know, create. Uh, Cause sometimes as you're creating work, if you're really creating, you're not making any money while you're actually creating the work. So the more that you can actually get funding before you start, is this gonna help you be a better artist? So at that point, you know, you're gonna say, okay, this is the stage. So if you're at that stage and you're at this meeting, you know, uh, this is kind of a good starting point. But what I always try to tell artists to do is like when you make that conscious decision to say, okay, proposals are coming up in my future, uh, whether it's I'm gonna, I'm gonna go after them next year, or I'm gonna go after them soon. You wanna start preparing yourself for that stage before it actually happens, before that proposal is in your face. So, and that goes with being active in the community now and making sure like as you're doing things to start documenting everything you're doing. So as you're going to the proposals, you're kind of building up your resume, your CV list to say, look, I've, I've done these things, help me with this funding or this proposal so I can keep doing it or do bigger ideas. Uh, so if you're out there and you're not really documenting the stuff that you're doing, the shows that you're doing, uh, it's almost like you haven't done nothing before. So that's already starting you behind uh, the starting line when you start to do proposals. So I just want to encourage people to, to really document all the things that you're doing now, because it's only going to help within your proposal process. If you're doing shows, don't depend on a photographer or videographer to, to take their the pictures, because sometimes that doesn't happen. Make sure you're taking pictures or doing some video and also definitely start building your CV list. So you wanna start participating in open calls and start already building up that resume so your proposal looks good when it comes across the desk. So once you've done that, or even if you haven't done that, even if your proposal, your CV list is pretty thin, you can still get out there and start doing proposals. Uh, and, you know, it's about, you know, this is, these are money conversations, you know, this, this is like, I, I'm trying to get to the money. And then you hear a lot of times, a lot of artists, they want to talk about is, it's not for the money and I'll do this regardless. And, and that's cool because we'll create regardless, but you know, you need the money to fuel your ideas. So there's nothing wrong with getting money, you know, first of all. And then you also got to just understand that you're valid. Like you'll be surprised a lot of the time the people writing the proposals who they're looking for are people just like you but you already kind of had this mental barrier that you're not going to get it or you you don't know how to do it so I always encourage people to just to just get out there and and start experiencing the process and start being strategic about getting a proposal so once you do that uh you know you want to really pay attention to everything that that person is is requesting from the proposal and and actually another thing before you even get to the proposal I always tell people to like I'm saying get ready for the proposal because uh, a lot of times when you see a proposal that might fit you sometimes the deadline is four weeks away or six weeks away it's coming up kind of quick and if you don't have nothing started it's very uh, overwhelming process and that's where a lot of artists get bogged down they just get overwhelmed it's almost like I got to drop everything I'm doing and work on this proposal. In the real life, that's kind of hard to do to put your best foot forward. So you want to start getting some of those checklist items done before you even start doing proposals because a lot of proposals are asking for the very same thing. One of the things they're always asking for is that CV list. So start getting your CV list together, uh, which is basically like an artist resume of things you've done. And if you only got one or two things on there, you only got one or two things, but just start getting your CV, CV list together and put as many items on there as you can. So boom, you already got that out the way. That's 20% of the proposal. And then they might ask for an artist statement or artist bio. You need to start getting these things done, getting ahead of the curve because they're gonna wanna ask you, who are you uh, that you're gonna need to articulate yourself. They're gonna ask for either a bio or artist statement. So before you even get into the proposal game, just start getting these things already done. Uh, and then they're gonna wanna see your work. 
You know, uh, what does your work look like? What have you done? So start getting, start cataloging your work at a high quality uh, method, like now. So when you need to put a, a portfolio together, 10 images or something, you don't have to do all that at once. You already got that, that stuff done. That's a big chunk of the proposal. That's a big chunk of the proposal right there. That's probably 70% of it. So you can do that ahead of the game. So when that proposal comes up, you don't feel overwhelmed. Uh, that's a lot of things that I think artists just go wrong. They're, they're, they're behind the eight ball and they're trying to get everything done when these are basic things to get 70% of it out the way. And then you also want to try to have a, 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 a good photo of yourself. You'd be surprised how many artists don't got a photo of themselves that they're proud of. You know, get a good photo of yourself. Uh, use that in your portfolio. I mean, in your proposal. I kind of, I've always put a photo of myself in there whether they ask for it or not, because I want them to know who they're dealing with. You know, uh, this is a different time uh, where 15 years ago, or, you know, I might have felt like being black was a disadvantage. But, you know, now you want to utilize that. Let them know because, you know, things have happened with protests that we have done and especially 2020 where they're actually looking to give money to black people. They're actually looking to give money to black women. They're actually looking to give money to the queer community. So you use what you got to get what you want. So that's why I'm gonna put a picture because you may not know from the name who you're dealing with. And beyond that, I want I want the people who are making these decisions to get familiar with me. So even if I don't get that proposal, I want my name and my face to be as familiar as possible because you're gonna have to get used to seeing me around. So I'm thinking about the long road every single time. Uh, and, and you're not going to be able to deny me at some point. And then you also realize a lot of people do, it's a human factor. These people who are judging these proposals are human. There's always a human factor to come on. If they know you or recognize you, subconsciously that works into your favor. So I, I do all these things, calculate it, and I do it in my proposal because I'm selling myself uh, when, I'm, when I'm putting myself out there. Uh, so these are some things that I think like start to do that now, like don't wait for the proposal and you're scrambling to get the CV, the photo, do all that now, because that's 80, 70% of the proposal. And then the other 20% is catered to whatever you're applying for. You know, if it's a certain proposal, then there's a section. If we're doing a mural, you're talking about that mural, but 70, 80% of it is is work that you can set the groundwork now. So boom, you're ahead of everybody else. So now the proposal process does not seem overwhelming. And also when, just to define proposal, when we're talking about proposals, we're talking about an organization that sent out an RFP, RFP, which is a request for proposal. They're looking for artists, they're looking to fund projects, they're looking for a mural, or you're looking for a residency and they're putting proposals. But then the other part of the game is, is pitch decks. That's when you're pitching a company for sponsorship or a partnership. Two completely separate things. So I'm going to address proposals first. This is when you see them from Fulton County, Black National Black Arts Festival sends out proposal requests for funding. Uh, and what you got to do is, as artists, you need to read <laughs> into descriptions, <laughs> you know, like, uh, don't, do too much. Whatever they're asking for, make sure you read what it says. Uh, so if they're saying the CV, if they're saying cover letter, if they're saying this, and if they're saying your CV list only one, one page, make it one page. If they're asking for a certain amount of images, give them exactly what they're asking for. They are judging you uh, without you in the room. You want to seem competent that you can follow instructions. It's a heat check, they do this. Uh, so read it, give them exactly what they're asking for. Uh, and also give it to them when they say, put it in one PDF, put that PDF in the order of, when, of how they're asking for stuff. If they say CV list, even though they're not saying, make that just page one, that's what they want. Do it in the order of what they want uh, because they're looking at a lot of proposals back to back and. You don't want them to have to figure out your structure. Uh, so artists read, that's sometimes an Achilles heel <laughs> when it comes to artists and you don't want to use this excuse as I'm an artist, you know, you want to come across like a professional because they're judging you on that proposal. 
uh, if they feel like you can do a good proposal, they feel like that you can do what you're proposing. If you can't even do what's in a the proposal, they're gonna bring up a lot of question marks to do they trust you with the money that they're trying to give you. So you wanna cut out all that doubt and say, look, I can follow instructions, so read. Uh, and then with that in mind, uh, you know that they are looking at a lot of proposals. So how can my proposal look better than the next one? Uh, and when you're talking about Atlanta, uh, when you see these RF, RF these proposals come out in Atlanta, the competition in Atlanta is stiff. You're going against your peers. You're going against some of your favorite artists. Uh, so you want to stand out. You want your proposal to look good. Sometimes Atlanta market be getting like a thousand proposals uh, that they got to go through or 600. That's quite a bit. So how can you filter through the noise? And that's going to be how, how good you follow instructions and how good your proposal looks. Uh, so that comes with a whole nother uh, skill set, which is, and this is again, I try to tell people to get prepared for these situations is you want to get familiar with software, like, because if you can't put the proposal together, uh, you know, the, uh, you're just behind the curve. So you want to spend a little time uh, learning some Adobe software to how these proposals are being built and taking the time to do that. And if you don't know that, then you need to be able to hire someone who can put your proposal together and make it look good uh, because they're judging you visually on the way that proposal looks, the instructions, and then the main thing is the meat of the proposal, your idea, but you're getting judged on all of those things. So you wanna score high on all of them. Uh, so I just always, I think if you're a visual art or a visual artist or a painter, I think it's good to, to know your way around some computer software and spend some time on your laptop or have a relationship with a designer that you can pay. And the same thing with writers. Uh, a lot of times I hear a lot of artists just say they can't write. Uh, and that may be true. Uh, then you need to find a ghostwriter. You need to find a writer to help you write your bio, to, to write your artist statement. And there's writers out there that you can pay 50 bucks or 100 bucks and there's money well spent to tell them verbally your artist statement and they can pin it. Uh, and then you can fill in the gaps in between, but have someone help you in that. Because uh, once you get that good proposal, you don't may not have to hire them all the time, then you can just edit it. Uh, but to get you going and to remove those barriers, you know, put somebody to work uh, and have them ghostwrite your artist statement in your bio and the same thing with design but i'm just saying the more you can do on your own is it'll just be stronger so and then you got to think about the human element like when i do my proposals uh i'm gonna make it a tough decision like I'm, i get a lot of proposals i go for but my and i don't get them all but i'm my average is pretty good but what i do want to do i want to be in the running and everything i do because i'm putting my time and energy so i want to give myself every little advantage so if you go to the room like if you the people who are, so you, you kind of want to know your audience. Some proposals are just a committee and they're jurors. And you'll be surprised sometimes you might know some of the people, some of the juries on that committee. Sometimes you want to think about who's on there and, and what you know you think might appeal to them. And then some proposals are done by, the final decision is actually by citizens. Like if we do some murals, they'll have some town halls. So you gotta say, I gotta cater to that neighborhood, you know? And it's usually gonna be some older person that's been in that neighborhood for years. You know what I'm saying? I need them on my side. I need to think about them as my client. Uh, you wanna be thinking about these things. Uh, and then sometimes just the way that the proposals are done when they're going, if they're in a room, they're going through a bunch of, proposals sometimes that first slide sets on there a little longer before they get into it like if they're going through it so i got to think about do i want to hit them with that first image because you know like they'll okay next one and they'll go to the next proposal that i know that first slide that cover slide might sit up there for a while i might want to hit them right out the rip or i might or i'm just conscious of that flow and how they're looking at it too i want to give them every reason to say yes or give them a very tough decision to, to, to not pick me, uh, but they're not gonna just fly by me because uh, I'm, I'm gonna check every every box off that list uh, because, you know, you need that money. Because, <laughs> you know, these, these, are, these are money things. And I'm telling you, like, uh, 
and and the thing about it too like uh, sometimes i hear artists don't want to do proposals because they think they're giving people their ideas and this that and the third and that could be true but you know you can't worry about that you got to put your best foot forward you got to give your best ideas a lot of these people not really fishing and still no ideas a lot of times a lot of times they're trying to fuel your your ideas and when it's coming from state money they have money they have to give out you know uh, or they they want to give it out uh they're not looking to a lot of times to take your ideas they're looking to fund you uh so those are something you just got to get past uh but also a lot of times you don't have to give them your best ideas uh sometimes you want to cater to the client and just start to get that ball rolling and say okay i know this is this particular company is looking for black female voices or something so i'm gonna curate a show around that or this company really supports the the queer community. Let me do something around that. Sometimes you met, you you cater your idea based off your client to go ahead and get that gig, and knowing that okay, eventually I'm gonna do exactly what I want to do. But just to get my foot in the door and start to get in this process and get people trusting me, giving money, you know, sometimes I might cater my idea actually to the client. These are things that you got to consider and and think like a business. Uh, so yeah, so that, that's kind of my approach. And then after that, you know, I just send it in. And the proposal game is a numbers game. Uh, there's usually a season that there's a lot of art proposals going on. There's a lot of art proposals going on now. It's kind of that fall season because people are trying to get rid of money before the calendar year is up, especially when they have government money. Uh, so it's usually like right after summer, you'll see a lot of proposals popping up. And then sometimes you see some at the start of the year when the pots get refilled. So I'm like already ready for proposal season. Uh, and, you know, you always got ideas that you catalog and it's a numbers game. Like you can literally send sometimes the same idea to five, six people, see who bite. Uh, and you, you know, the more you do, the higher success rate and you don't take it personal when you don't get it. And it's not a waste of time because you're you're going to get better and better every time. So that's kind of my overall approach. So kind of what I said, the, the meat of it is, you know, get your CV, get your artist statement, get your bio, get your photo, get your art documented like now. Just get that out the way. That's the, that's the biggest part of every proposal. So then after that, you're just doing 20 or 30 percent catering to that specific uh, proposal. And then you want to also follow the people who are giving the proposal so you know when they're coming up. So National Black Arts Festival, you know, Fulton County Arts and Culture. Uh, you want to stay abreast to who's who actually giving the money. So you can see it right at the forefront uh, and be calculated about it and, and go after it. And the thing that you just really want to realize is that your idea has value. You know, that's what you have to believe. Uh, so whether you got a live experience like me, like like I have a lot of my stuff documented. So if you never heard about me, I can show you the things that I've done. But sometimes even if you've never done nothing before, that doesn't mean that you don't have a shot of getting that proposal. You just need to present yourself well, a company that you can get it. And then you just got to have that confidence that, yo, my idea is good. You know, it has value. I think other people will believe in it. Uh, I'm going to just put myself out there and, and just take that doubt and that fear like out of the equation. And like I said, it's a new day, you know, like you, you right now and you take advantage because people are are, are are looking for black candidates. They're looking for marginalized communities, they're looking for natives, they're looking for transgender. When before, you know, it was meant you felt like it was going to go to a white man. Uh, and they still got a place in this world, but you have, and it's an interesting time that you can go and get that money more than any other time before. Uh, and also, like I said, you know, go to your local area, but also, you know, start checking in the smaller markets. Uh, Atlanta, like I said, has a lot of competition, but there's a lot of proposals. You might come from a smaller area. You'd be surprised even your own, your little small hometown got some art proposals out there and they're not getting hardly no candidates because it's a small market. So I've done things in a small market and I got those like all the time. And sometimes those are like better, better clients because, you know, they were, it's just a smaller market is, you know, they kind of, I had a lot of success basically I say in small markets. So don't sleep on 
let me check what's in this little small town because they probably got some art money too. And then you also look in Atlanta, uh, but competition is a little stiffer, but you start looking at all these places. There's uh, art websites and apps that do nothing but post proposals. So you just got to get on those radars and, uh, and apply and, uh, and just be able to articulate yourself and, and have it uh, to where it looks right. And I have some proposals, some of my past proposals that I'll share my screen and show. And uh, I'll also allow these to be downloaded uh, or emailed or however way I can get them to you so you can actually see your proposal because some people have never even seen one. So I think it's an advantage to just look at one and see the structure. It's the same thing with like a CV list and the artist bio and the artist statement. Some artists are out here and honestly never put their eyes on one. Uh, look at whatever artists you like. Some of your favorite artists are a little more established and go to their website. I'm pretty, I bet you their CV lists or bios on there in their artist statement and see how it's written, see how they're writing it. And it gives you a, a reference to how you can do it. On my website, eugeneberg.com, my artist statement and my bio is on there. So you can see how it's written so you can write it. Uh, my CV list is on there. See, see the structure and just mimic that structure but fill in your information. Uh, so like a like a bio is usually written in uh, in third person. Uh, so it's like Eugene Burr was born here, but an artist statement is usually written in first person. It's like, I, I did this because it's like my statement. So you kind of want to follow that structure so you can just seem like you know what you're doing basically like uh even though there's no rules but you know you still want to seem like you know I, i'm up here with every i got the same structure like these other guys it just makes you seem official because they're judging you they're judging you on every little thing and you'll be surprised how some people will want to pick out something to to make you be not the one so you want to take away all that ammunition as much as possible and just be like now what you know like you're just gonna not pick me because you don't like my idea not because you trying to pick holes in something that I don't know. So the more you study what other artists are doing is, is going to give you an advantage. Like I said, not what they're saying, but the structure and then come with your own, with your own sauce that makes you different. So yeah, so those are how you respond to proposals. Uh, and now uh, sponsorships and pitch decks is different. That's when you're soliciting a brand like almost, un, you know, you're just targeting them whether they ask for it or not and say, yo, I, I want you to fund this idea or we can partnership. And like one, for example, is always uh, spirit companies like uh, liquor companies. You always see sometimes on art shows like people got liquor sponsors. There's, they're somewhat one of the easiest ones to get like a beverage sponsor out the rip. So they're a good place to start. So like you can pitch them and but you'll be surprised a lot of companies have on their website, they'll have a whole section that's made, this is how you submit a pitch. You can some, you can pitch like Johnson & Johnson or Nike or whoever. Uh, but when you pitch them, it's completely different than a proposal. When you, and first of all, a lot of people say sponsorship too, like they don't really like that word anymore. It's really a partnership. Like if someone's giving you money, like a liquor company, they don't want to sponsor your ass. They want to partner with you. So you really want to use those words to, uh, if you're soliciting them, you don't want to say you're soliciting a sponsorship. You want to say partnership. That's what they want. That's that's the new kind of trending thing. Uh, so really it's a partnership. Uh, so when you when you go after them, you you want to, First of all, you look at who's already in the market. Like that's the easiest thing. So if you if you got an art background and you're pitching them with something art related, first of all, you want to say, okay, what are the companies that are already supporting the arts? As opposed to me trying to convince you to support the arts. There's already companies out there supporting the arts. Those are the ones you want to pitch. So if there's already a liquor company or a sponsor, uh, okay. Yeah, sorry about that. But yeah, so when you, uh, like, it's like if you're going after a spirit company, a liquor company for an event, 
First of all, you say, who, who out here is already supporting the Atlanta art community? Okay, I'm gonna pitch them first. It's gonna be so much easier. Uh, so when I start to build my, my pitch deck for them, I'm coming at them as almost like, uh, it's a little more ass kissing the wall, I say. Like, I gotta appeal to them. Like, why do you wanna, why would you wanna deal with me, big corporate brand? Uh, I, gotta, I gotta cater to them a little bit more. So I'm gonna make the pitch deck just sub, subconsciously like in their brand colors. I'm gonna do things to their aesthetic. I'm gonna do things that they like, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna show them that I can come on brand. Uh, and then I really gotta sell myself on why they should deal with me. And these are when other factors come into play that doesn't necessarily sometimes come into play in your proposal. They're going to look at your social following. They're going to see your activity. They're gonna fact check you. You're gonna say, who is this person? That's when you know, when I say document your work is so much important so I can have my stuff out there on YouTube and when they want to look at me, they can see my shows. In my pitch deck, I'm showing them links to my stuff, but they're going to do their own due diligence too. They're definitely going to judge you on your social. Uh, even though I like to not pay attention to it, it in these things, it, it matters uh, because what all they really care about is selling their product. When you're dealing with a pitch deck, what your the trade-off is you partner with me and let me do this event or do my idea. The trade-off is now I'm going to expose you to my audience. So I'm going to convert a couple of more, like I had Maker's Mark, my friends that drink bourbon, I'm going to convert them from Jack Daniels to Maker's Mark or something. I'm, I'm going to take some market share. You're going to get more customers. That's all they care about is uh, selling their product. If it's Nike, that's what they care about. Uh, and they want your audience. So if you have influence in a community, you know, they want to use you to sell their product. And that's fine. Uh, if it's a company that, you know, you want to get engaged with. And, and they can give you free product or they can give you cash to fund your ideas. And what it's doing for you is also validating in people's eyes that, you know, people like that. People like when your your wagon is hitched to a name brand. It makes you feel like your stock has increased and even though the, <laughs> in reality these things shouldn't matter but in this world it does so so you're also showing your audience that i'm growing i got these affiliations i'm dealing with different people and they're trying to sell their product to your demographic which if you're black they're trying to sell to the black creative community or they're trying to uh you know make amends for these dark passes that a lot of these white companies have and that's just straight up and black people have been holding these companies accountable uh so like for me for makers mark uh you know that's a kentucky bourbon you know they got a racist pass you know 2020 came you know they got new leadership they they want to they want to say look we're supporting black folks uh i understand that i'm very smart and i and you you willing to partner with them uh, to get what you need and, and do good with that, then that's the decision you make. And that, but that's exactly what they're doing. So this is the time, you know, that you know you you kind of you take all of that and you pay attention. Uh, so you know you'll be surprised. There's there's people who just work for liquor companies and they're on marketing boards. So you know if you start to be around the right people, you'll start to hear insight that this company is looking to tap more into the black community. Oh, this company is looking to tap into the black creative community. And then you say, okay, I'm gonna pitch them. You know, you start hearing things or this company is involved in the queer community and you might be queer. So, yo, I'm gonna I'm tackle them with what I'm doing because they're trying to come into my market. I'm gonna use them, they can, you know, we might be using each other, but we trying to both get what we need. Uh, that's a, a, a pitch. Uh, you might have these dream companies like you want to work for, like I would like to work for Converse or Nike or something, but sometimes you can't go right after your dream company. You go after what you can get. Uh, and the more you can do, you're validating with these other companies that you know how to work with sponsors and you know how to take uh, pitches and then you can land your dream opportunity. Uh, cause some, and I say that because I, I see a lot of artists sometimes they hold out for their ideal dream client or their ideal real partner, and that's great. But you need to work at that one that you that's in front of you uh, and get some experience and, and try to get in where you fit in and that'll lead to getting the things that you really want in life. 
And sometimes when you're new, sometimes you may not want to work for your dream client right out the rip. You might mess that opportunity up. <laughs> so, so go ahead and just get what's in front of you. And some of the easiest ones in our community to get are spare companies. Uh, you can get like Sam Flax and, and Blick to give you uh, a sponsorship to even get our supplies. Uh, yo, I'm working on this body of work. I got this show. We know how expensive our supplies are. <laughs> yo, you need to, you can holler at them and say, give me some free art supplies and I'm going to be Instagramming your art supply on my stories all the time. And I'm going to put your flyer, your logo on my flyer. And, you know, I'm, I got art, art supply sponsor. So now I'm not buying my own art supplies. And uh, because you realize how much money they make on us in the community. All right. Thanks for stopping by. All right. Okay, for sure. All right. <laughs> But uh, so these are things you got to think about. And these are things that you start to realize once you start to know your worth. Uh, so once you start to know your worth and you start to say, yo, this shit has value. What I bring to the table has value. My ideas have value. You feel confident that you can start going after these companies and you can start pitching them. And, uh, you know, and then sometimes you'll be surprised that you, you'll get it. So it's about not selling yourself short. And also recognizing the value and recognizing that you can uh, swing things. Uh, so what you got to realize is that you're a creator. That's a very powerful position to be in. You know, you make things. You know, you are an industry. You're an entity. You manufacture. You market. You want to start walking around and treating yourself like a business and knowing what you you got something that you bring to the table. And even your story, what you have been through your trauma or whatever it is that you talk about in your art, you gotta say this stuff has value. So once you start to recognize the value, you start holding your head up a little bit and it, and it shows and it shows, it shows in your pitch, it shows in dealing with you. And then they'd be like, you know, I do wanna deal with that person, you know? But if you come to the table, like, you know, shoulder slump and all almost downtrodden, like, some, like I see some artists do and just like, oh, please give me this opportunity. You know, sometimes you might get these mercy things, but you want to come in with your confidence and your head up high, knowing that, yo, I, I'm good at what I do and I'm committed to this and and I have value and black stories are important. And women's stories are important and y'all been marginalized. And when I'm talking about pitches, you know, y'all been taken from our community for so long. Like, you don't come out and say it like that, but that's what you're saying, you know, and I'm part of this community and I want to do this and get on board, you know. Uh, you know, you say it in a marketing way, but that's what you say, you know, uh, nowadays, you know, like it's a different time, like, uh, but a big part of it is the confidence. And then once you got the confidence, you gotta be able to show it and not just talk it. So that's why you want your proposal to be good. And then once you get the funding or the, the, the partnership, then you need to follow through on your work. And, and do what you said uh, and, and not just try to milk the cow too much. You know, like you always want to get paid and pay yourself, but you want to make whatever project that you got money for a really great project or whatever event you got, make it a really good event and pay who you need to pay uh, and represent, you know? So it's easier for that next person coming behind or it's easier for you to keep getting the money, build long-term relationships. Uh, but yeah, but all that said, uh, I'm going to show some of my past proposals and kind of talk through them. But before I do that, because I know I said a lot, is there any questions or anything that you want to speak about or you, or you just want to say that to the end? I don't know if our mics are on or not, but I'm looking at the chat too. I have a question. Um, sure. so how for the pitch decks for sponsor or partnerships specifically, are you pitching a specific amount to companies like out the gate or are you like reserving that conversation until they buy? Um, and I'm curious, like, what is the range of amounts that is appropriate to, um, pitch or yeah. conversation about? That's a really good question because you kind of got to fill the room a little bit. And, uh, so when I'm when I'm pitching a company, I'm kind of usually pitching, I kind of got maybe like some some insight. 
like somebody works at that job or something, or I've seen some other events that they have done and I can kind of guesstimate what that budget is. Uh, and I want to come in close to something that I think they have done before. Uh, and a lot of times I might want to over ask, I, I want to give them a range. Like if I'm pitching them blindly, I, I want to give them a range uh, because you really don't have no idea. But I'm trying to go on as much past information uh, that I can as possible. And if I don't have any information, I'm just going on what I think it would cost to fund my idea. Uh, but I'm gonna give them some range. So I might say, uh, and I mean, it might be a big range, like 10 to 25 grand or depending on how big your idea is, it might be like 20 to 40 grand. And then when I'm pitching my idea, I'm gonna give them the moon. Like, like when, when I'm pitching, I wanna go for a best case scenario. I don't wanna lowball it. I want, I want this event to be dope. I wanna do this and I'm gonna tell you everything I can do with this money. Now, if they come back and I, and I pitch them and I say, I need 30 grand to pull this off. If they say, yo, we love this, this is dope. We only got 15. I'm gonna be like, cool. But you know what? I can't do all that. I'm gonna pull this back to a 15 grand idea because I ain't about to kill myself because I can't fund this idea with this, but I already got them in bed now. So I think in order to not shoot yourself short, I think you ask for what you want within reason. You know, I'm not asking for a million dollars or nothing, but, but if I know I can really pop this off for 30 grand, I need to ask for 30 grand. Rather I ever, I may not have never done an event for 30 grand, but I always wanted to have 30 grand to do an event for. So I'm gonna holler at y'all and I'm gonna say, I need 30, 40 grand because if, if I seen them already do events that are like I estimated at 60 or 70, I know that 30 grand ain't nothing. Uh, but then, like I said, I'm gonna overestimate. And then my proposal, like I'll show you too, like some of them, I'm gonna have all the lofty ideas that I wanna do. And they might come back and say, give me a lower number. So guess what? You don't get that 30 grand idea for 20 grand. I'm gonna give you the same concept and it's gonna be dope, but I'm gonna have to scale back. Uh, and they gonna be okay with that uh, if you know if they even buy it initially. So I, I so a lot of times when you do give them a a good idea, the first thing somebody in that room is gonna want to talk numbers. So you want to have some number sometimes at the beginning because sometimes they don't even make any room for you to to double back and 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 do that. And it. And I tell you though, it depends. So if I'm shooting it shoot in the dark and I'm just really going on the website and I'm soliciting the company, I'm gonna get them some numbers. But if I do got an inside track of someone who's on that marketing board or someone who's in that room that's secretly like orchestrating, because that happens, uh, I'm gonna ask for their advice. Uh, and if they say, hold off on the numbers and I'm gonna hold off. But if I don't have that insight, I'm gonna hit them with some numbers. Uh, but a lot of times that's why I say like, you'll be surprised so like when you start going to art shows and you go into art shows, this is something too, like I say, you set the stage. Like once you start doing shows and you're getting out in the art community, if you are really super introverted and you're not talking to people, you're at a, you're at a big disadvantage. Uh, you have to start speaking up as an artist. Like I, I, I really started challenging myself when I started taking it more serious because you really never know who's there. You'll be surprised that you'll just be talking to someone and say, hey, yeah, I work for Grey Goose. And you'd be like, oh shit. So you'd be like, yo, you don't really hit them up about no sponsor. So you say, give me a card. Like, let me get your card. They're going to give you a card because that person might be that rep for that particular show there, or they just work there and they're just looking at our show. So then I got this person's card. So now I might hit them up and say, you know, I was trying to get, do this, blah, 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 blah. And they might tell you who the right person is. Uh, and for me, that's how it, happens i started to know these liquor reps so i started hitting them up and the thing about the pitch decks too that i didn't mention is like there's always i'm, I'm a hustler right because I, I really honestly wanted to lead it this is hustle these, these are money talks like I, I'm, I'm a hustle and then the more you a hustler the more you realize art is a hustle like you'll start making more progress if you're not in this game and you're not recognizing the hustle side and that business side you always go to be behind the curve so like for me, like when I really start to say I'm hustling, I got to understand like there's a, everybody else is a hustler too. So in order for that, the, this is for pitch decks and it, I, low key, I know this works for proposals too. It's just at a whole nother level. 
But when you are going for a pitch deck, and I do got someone in that marketing department that might go to bat for me. Why are they going to bat for me? They got to have some incentive, really. First of all, they got to think you go do what you go do. And then second, they be making money off the back end. So like if I got a, a certain a person on the marketing department that will put a couple ideas together for their person, but they're really, the, de the deck is stacked and they really want my idea. If I'm saying I'm going for 30 grand, that person might take five. You know what I'm saying? So they they really paid $30,000. I gave that person at the bat for me. He took five off the top for doing his job anyway. Uh, and then I and I got to work the event for 25. Now, am I okay with that? Hell yeah, because now I got 25 to work with. I ain't got no problem giving you that five grand. Uh, you got to be, you got to understand the hustle. Uh, some people might be like, nah, I ain't giving you that five grand. You do this job. <laughs> he ain't going to be in there arguing for you. And you and what you want this man to, or this woman to do, lose their job? You know, I need them batting for me. This is that behind the scenes stuff, that hustle. So that's that's the reason why he's going to go to bat for me because a lot, of, a lot of times people ain't doing it out the kindness of their heart. So you got to really understand humans, like the human factor, the psychology factor, uh, especially when you're dealing with pitch decks. This goes on all the time. So yes, <laughs> if you're there, you my cheerleader, you know, you take yours off the top because I don't make this event pop and, I, and I'm going to keep some money in my pocket and I'm going to employ some people and we go do this thing. That's a big key to it that you got to understand this is a hustle. And uh and, and if people don't feel that way about you, a lot of times they're not even gonna kind of approach you like because they don't know your response. They're kind of putting their job on the line. This, these are just different things that you filling it out. And then sometimes if they don't even come to me like on the pitch deck and they don't even come to me with, they taking it off the top, uh, I even let them know. I'd be like, yo, you know, I appreciate you. You know, you want to take a finder's fee. That's cool. Uh, some people say, no, nah, I just want you to win, but that's a rare margin. Most of them be like, yes, I want that finder's fee. And we go run this every year if we can. Uh, and this is really business. You know, this is what they do. And I know this is going down to government level and when they get the money and they divvy it out. Of course, they got some for themselves for their staff and administration and whatnot. But that's that's just the way it is. So you got to understand the game. Uh, and you got to be one of those people that, you know, that, that, that know that, uh, but, but yeah, so, so long story short, I would, I would put the funding, I would, I would put the ass up if you don't have no insight, because sometimes they don't even take you serious if you're not talking numbers, because that's a difficult conversation for artists to have. But again, when you know your value, like if you, if you're scared to put the number, what you're saying is you don't know your value. Uh, and then you're gonna let them tell you what your ideas were. Like people don't really respond to that. People like confidence. And they also, when they, these people are married to the art community, they're sometimes are using the art community or whatever, or they just might wanna support the arts, but they, they not invested like us. So they need all that information up front. Like, why am I holding back? Because that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the main question is how much is this gonna cost me? So the more that I can talk about it, the more that they're even confident that I know uh, what it is. So you got to do your research. So like, if you want to rent a venue, how much that you need to know how much that venue costs up front. If you need chairs, how much that, because then if you undershoot, then you go be covering that cost or your event's going to be underwhelming. Uh, and then you pay yourself. You always make sure you pay yourself. Uh, and sometimes you can skim on the budget, like you can do things cheaper and, and get even more, but you still want to put a line item to pay yourself. Uh, but yeah, so in, that's a good question. Thanks for asking. Any other questions before I show the the? Yeah, um, I was just wondering, hey, Jane, it's Reese. I was just wondering, um, like, I'm not an artist, but I am an aspiring curator. I just feel like it's important to just um, have some people that may want to focus on just helping with getting events together in my case like in particular I wouldn't have like I guess an artist profile so what if I were to do let's say I wanted to curate a group show but I wanted to do a proposal would I include the bios of all the artists involved or would I have my own personal bio 
as far as like my goals in this art community or in my career like how would that work as just a sole curator with no art history <laughs> no, i got you that's a that's a great question uh and you're submitting as a curator uh no that that is a very good question because sometimes i'm a visual artist and a curator sometimes i get caught up i skew it to to the to the visual artist but there is a there is a place in the room for people like you that's that is very important and you, you bring value to the room too and people know that like a lot of the curators and the organizers and even probably some of the leaders of National Black Arts Festival, they don't actually paint. They they love the arts, they're good at organization, they wanna use their skill sets to further our community. So of course there's a place for you. But what you do is you come in as a curator. So you put your proposal together that I'm curating this event. So yeah, you put your curator statement. You don't have an artist statement, but you have ideas of the things that you wanna curate. So you do your curator statement. And if you don't have any CV, you haven't done any shows, uh, you know, you just put that, then your CV is kind of more filled with like your education and maybe some events that may not even be art related that you've done, or it might just be pretty thin. Uh, but, you know, you, you come in as a curator and you're, you do your curator statement. And if you do got some artists that you already have in mind for the show, yeah, you show like, these are some examples of the, some of the artists that I want to bring in or if you don't have no artists, you say that too. Say, you know, once this project is going, then I'm gonna do an open call uh, and I'm gonna get these type of artists or whatever. But if you have some in mind that is strengthen your proposal, like especially if there's some that maybe like, did you have a relationship that got some bigger names that you can just kind of name drop? Uh, you say, yeah, the, you know, I can get them to be a part of it and I'll get some more. But if you don't have none, then you just, you explain how you're gonna get the artist. So you say, I'm gonna have an open call, I'm gonna do this. You just gotta show your plan. And you come in as a curator uh, because the non-artists are very important to the artist community because sometimes not all artists can multitask. A lot of artists just wanna create the work. We need curators, we need organizers, we need people like yourself. And tell you the truth is usually, a a lot of women that do that job a lot better. Uh, so you have every right to do that. Uh, even if you wanted to curate a dance performance, you don't have to dance, but you you want to champion the dance community. Uh, so yeah, so you you're right in the game, and you're same you're you're in the game too with pitch decks. You can do everything that the 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 visual artist is doing, but yes, you're doing it as a curator or creative director because the idea has merit and has the idea is valuable uh as well not everyone is implementing the ideas sometimes people come up with the ideas and they can do the x's and o's like the coach so uh i use a lot of sporting analogies sometimes but but yeah so yeah you would come in as a curator and then any other non painter that wants to get into the art community, you do the same thing. Uh, but one of the buzzwords that they're going to like and respond to is, is curator, because it's something that they can understand. Uh, even if you have someone else, like once you get the proposal, you actually double team with an experienced curator, if you never had the experience, but you're just way better at writing grants, like in, in, in actually doing that, that aspect, uh, you can lead at that. Or if you feel like you wanna get behind someone and, and be a part of the team, because that's an also the thing too, in my proposals, some, if I have a team, I'm a list of team. Uh, Cause sometimes I wanna show like this idea is so big. Sometimes they feel, they feel more competent if you already have uh, like a team behind you. So I'll list those people too. Uh, so you can either come in as the head or if you feel like this artist, you can utilize this person, like they can get more attention. You can be really the one leading it, but you put yourself as a team member, uh, you know, and you can do it as the artist. If that's the artist you have a relationship with, only if you think it benefits you though, but don't be afraid to be at the forefront uh, because no, that's, 
you're you're just as valuable as the visual artist in this situation. Yeah, you're you're not less than. Thank you, thank you. I really needed that. <laughs> sure, and I tell you, like you're almost people who want to serve our community are more valuable in my eyes than people who just want to take from it. So, because a lot of artists at the same time they're going to champion themselves, you know, like it's just straight up. Uh, you got a very few community for it artists to me, but someone like yourself might be more community based than that just regular artists. Uh, so now nah, you have a seat at the table and they're actually looking for people like you. Okay, thank you. Sure. Any other questions or you want me to show these things? I just want to chime in and say, Reese, I just sent you a um, direct message if you want to send me your information. I'm a choreographer oh. looking for a curator. So, oh, okay, I'm sure. Yeah, I'll definitely send it to you. Yeah, you see how Sorry, that works? I'm off on it. Right. <laughs> now, artists need, like, artists need people like you. We need supporters because sometimes we do want to focus on the work and we're doing so many things. We, we need people who want to do it. We need like minded people, uh, a very valuable asset. Uh, I think the best way to get into the art community is to serve the community. I even think that for artists, like if you come in and the method of service, you're going to have a way better uh, success rate. Uh, that's definitely my philosophy. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, connect those dots and 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 yeah, and definitely, uh, you know, don't let that hesitate you. And the other thing too, like I, I speak, I speak a lot. Uh, I'm a visual artist. Uh, I speak to that because that's what I primarily am. Uh, but when you see these proposals, they are looking for all art mediums, and you have an advantage too because they're actually getting a lot of painters a lot of times. They are looking for dancers. They are looking for poets. They even like writers. They they do movie screenings. Uh, I never seen I never been in an art proposal like with the city situation where they pigeonholed uh, art uh, media in someone's creative expression. They're actually looking for that out of box stuff a lot more than maybe in the past. And they also know like your I, your funding is needed because at the end of the day, a painter can we're making things to be sold. There are some artistic, artistic expressions that aren't meant to be sold, they're an expression. So they need that funding. Uh, so these rules apply to all of that. I think some people, even art residencies, they think that because they don't paint that it's not for them. You'd be surprised, like that is the furthest thing from the truth. You know, I know dancers who got uh, residencies. I know poets, I, I, I know writers, uh, you know, because they just went for it. Even though it, even the marketing might, might make it seem like the painter is the prominent thing. And, as, and it's almost just because that just is what it is, but uh, but it, it, it's not true though. Like all art mediums and creative expression, and especially when you're dealing with black leadership is, you know, those things are always welcome. And they do understand that honestly, you know, sometimes the only way that y'all get money is is the only way you make money is through funding. So there, you know, you you always have advocates on those boards for these creative expressions and curators and, and things of that nature, like outside of people who actually produce the work. All right, I'm gonna share my screen and go ahead and get into this. Everybody still hear me okay right now? I mean, I guess every people's mic is muted, but I guess so. I'm gonna try to. Share my screen. Were you saying something? We hear you perfectly. Okay. All right. So I'm going to show uh, the proposals first. I'll start off with one of my early ones. I did it. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes, we can see it. All right, thank you. This is one of the first ones I did when uh, I made a decision that this is the next step in my life as an artist. Uh, and like I said, it's a big step to quit my job. You know, I needed these big money projects up front to help sustain. Uh, I needed that guaranteed money. I 
I'm painting and I'm trying to sell, but I need a couple of these guaranteed money. So when I wanted to do proposals, this is one of the first ones I did, which is for the belt line. Uh, and I'd never done murals. This was my first mural. So I was really nervous and I had friends who encouraged me to just do it. Uh, like Fabian was telling me for years uh, to start doing murals. Uh, so the belt line was one of the first ones I did. And this was like 2019. And I think this is what started people wanting me to do proposals. <laughs> it got around that I did a good proposal. So when I was saying like sometimes that first slide, like when they're going through the proposals and they went through 20 proposals, okay, it's Eugene Burr's time. Sometimes that first slide sets on that screen for a while before they get ready to start. So I wanted to hit them right out with it. I didn't want to waste no time. Boom, this is what I'm proposing. This is it. This is the name of it. This is how I think it's going to look. Uh, and I was in a situation that I didn't have the exact picture of the wall. Uh, so I just picked a random wall and I, I put my art on it. Like, I want you to see it. I don't want you to have to use your imagination because like the young lady who said she wants to get an art game, but she doesn't do art. A lot of these people on the board, they don't do art either. So sometimes they cannot visualize what you are saying uh, like an artist can, because a lot of people making these decisions do not do art. Uh, sometimes you might have one artist and, you know, or they used to do art. Uh, sometimes you have a lot of artists, it just depends. But I promise you, like, that main person probably never done nothing, in, no art in their life. So I can't depend on them to be able to understand what I'm saying. I got to show you. So this is where Photoshop comes in. That's when I say you want to know some Adobe software. So I just basically took my painting, superimposed it on the wall. This is how it's going to look right out the gate. Uh, so this is page one. And then, you know, I got my name. I got my contact information right there. I got what it is, a boat, water mural, belt line, I'm giving them everything that they want, that they need. So now I'm getting into, they had several walls, so I didn't know exactly what the size of the wall was. Uh, so I got my, my project statement right here above water. I've got a narrative about what it is. So a lot of, you know, I'm selling it to you in verb form. And then I got elevations of the different wall sizes that they had that you're available. Excuse me. They had a 25 by 25 foot. Okay. This is how it's going to look exactly to scale in a 25 by 25 foot layout. Okay. You, you also got a 25 by 75 foot wall. Okay, guess what? My design works for that wall too. This is how it works if you choose me for the big, for the big. Uh, you know, you don't have to have an imagination. You don't have to have an imagination. Okay. And then I got an elevation of how it looks to scale. Okay, this is the 25 foot wall. I got some people in there for scale. And I laid this out in Adobe Illustrator. And then I got an elevation of the 25 by 75 foot wall. You know, you can't pick too many holes into this. You you get it. It's all about do you like my my graphic? I'm 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 showing visually that I'm even though I've never done a mural before, the way I my proposal looks like I'm very competent that I can pull this off. I'm still unsure at this point. I'm still really nervous. <laughs> I tell you, I've never done aerosol up to this point, And I'm saying I can do a 75 foot wall. But in my proposal, they don't know that. It looks like I can pull this off because I, it's very compelling. Uh, and then they wanted to see some examples of some past work. Uh, so I didn't really have any murals, so I'm just showing on my paintings. OK, these are some of my paintings. This was kind of the closest thing that I did to a mural at the time, which is what I did for a 21 Savage project. Uh, and then I just got more paintings because that's all I got. I don't have no murals really, but I can paint, you know, and I can put a good proposal together that can maybe make you believe that I can do this. And then, like I said, I put a picture of myself. Okay, I'm a black male. You need some more black males on Bellline. I'm your guy, you know. Uh, you know, that's me. Okay, this is my team. D these are the people that are going to help me paint the wall. Uh, got them right there. You know, I got, I'm, I'm, I got this, you know, I can pull this off for the 75 foot wall. Look, I got a crew. I don't have to go looking. Even if I, even I may not even talk to 
my friends to see if they were available yet. But I, I, I know I want to show them that I got all ends covered. And also I'm employing other people too. They, they, they like to know that. I'm not just keeping all this mural money for myself. Guess what? You're four black people gonna get paid off this project, you know? Uh, and then I'm gonna get to the budget, uh, which I just covered the numbers cause you don't need to know how much money I'd be making out here in these streets. But, <laughs> but I put it in there, the line items to see, to, so you can see how I broke it down. So I, I knew they had two big walls. I didn't know which one I would get. So I broke it down for the 25 by 25 foot and the 25 by 75 foot. So I got materials. Okay, water-based exterior paint. I was gonna go with a latex background and, and then spray paint on top. So I got that, I got my brushes, I got this. I know I needed a projector. I put that into the budget. I got artist help. And then I got my artist fee, artist vision and labor vision and labor you know you got to pay for both of those and at the time i didn't really know i never did a mural i didn't really know what the price honestly uh this was a project that you know i had to come up with the price i knew the belt line had a budget but if they can get a mirrorless to do it for cheaper they'll get them to do it for cheaper so they can hire more mirrorless so they they kind of tell they, they and also if they got a big artist the belt line is good at, at paying more of a rate uh so they ask you what's your rate I, I didn't know i asked my friends at the time a lot of people was like ten dollars a square foot is decent uh, but it goes from 10 up to 30 dollars a square foot but anywhere between ten dollars and twenty dollars a square foot for a mural was decent so even though i was new i didn't want to come in at the lower end so i said okay i do it for 15 dollars a square foot so then this is the square footage of 25 by 25, and that's the total. So if you want to know how much I propose, you can really do the math. Uh, but that's what I propose, $15 a square foot, because I just didn't really know no better. Uh, and that's a good way, if you don't know, it's just charge, charge a going rate that's fair with the size of the wall. And this is, again, you see this is itemized for artist vision and labor. I have a total separate budget for materials and stuff. This is this is what this is my fee. So uh, fifteen dollars a square foot on a twenty-five by seventy-five wall is a little bigger. So that number is a little bigger. So more money. I wanted the bigger wall for more money, but me being less experienced, I was okay with either one. I ended up getting it. The wall is like twenty-five by fifty. Uh, so I, I got this project. It was my biggest. I mean, my first mural, and still my biggest. Uh, on the belt line and they like my proposal. And that's really all it was like is cover elevations of the work, you know? And really what I did, I took an existing painting and I said, I want to do this as a mural. So I already had a painting that, so it, I already had a, a starting line, but I wanted this painting as a mural. So that's what I put on at first. And then I drew this on my iPad and gave them the elevations, put in past work and, I put a, my artist statement and my team in the budget and I sent it off. And this was one of the first ones I did. I can't remember if it was the very first, but it's one of the first proposals that I, that I started to do. And this is for a mural project. Uh, and they liked this proposal. This is what got out that I do good proposals. Uh, so I won at the proposal stage. Uh, I didn't win at the experience stage because I never done a mural. I beat them, I beat people at the proposal stage. Uh, and I got the money that I asked for. If I would have put $20 a square foot, I probably would have got $20 a square foot. Uh, because the proposal told them that he can do this. I, I wasn't for sure yet. <laughs> when I got on that big wall, like <laughs> what I get myself into, and I said, I guess we're doing this. And I did it. So then now I have a a, a proposal to go from, and I'll go to the second proposal. Uh so now this is a small market. Uh, this was, uh, I'm, you know, a little bit about me. I'm from, I'm from uh, Wichita, Kansas. Uh, and I never thought I would do an art project in Kansas. It's a way smaller market, uh, but a friend. And this again, when you, art is a relationship game. I got friends that look out for me. My friend heard about this project and he just sent it to me on Facebook and say, hey, Eugene, check this out. And I was like, hey, you know, that's actually perfect for me. I'm gonna go for it. Uh, and I did, and uh, I kind of was confident because 
I just knew I was like, this is a very small market. I'm not going against all my peers in Atlanta, all these great artists. And, and I was like, there's probably not going to be a lot of competition for this one in Kansas. And it was right after 2020 and the city wanted something that was black forward. They, you know, so I'm like, I'm your guy. I know some of those other artists probably there would have been white or they wouldn't have had just the caliber of artists. And so I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to get this project. This is, uh, it was city of Manhattan, Manhattan, Kansas. Uh, this one, I, I just made a different decision to not hit them over the head on the cover. I was like, okay, I'm just going to bait them in a little bit, uh, but I got everything that they needed, the project name, my name, and I just made a little graphic that kind of went with what I was proposing. Uh, it's crazy. I got a lot of aquatic murals. Uh, and then I'm also going on the structure of what they say they wanted. I did the same thing on the bell line. If they say they want it, the bio, whatever, I'm going to do it. I'm going to lay the PDF in that structure. So this is what they asked for. Uh, they asked for an artist statement first. Like I said, they don't always ask. They don't ever really ask for a photo, but I put it in there uh, to let them know. This is a, you want black subject matter? You need to have a black artist do it. So I'm, guess what? I'm black. Uh, so I, I just combined it in there with my artist statement. That I put my photo in there. Okay. And then they asked for my CV. So, and I'm, like I said, I'll share these files. So if you've never seen a CV, this is my CV. Education, any awards, solo exhibits, group exhibits. You wanna start documenting all this stuff. And sometimes you just wanna start getting in shows to build your CV up. So if you see a bunch of, open, is there some open calls? Just start doing some open calls to start having some meat on your CV. Even if you may not sell at that show, but you're building up your CV. So this is all the footwork that you do you know, now, uh, it's not always about making money all the time. It's about, about getting this type of credentials. Uh, so then I got my curated stuff, any press, special projects, uh, any press, uh, any lectures. My CV is pretty long. Uh, they asked for references. So I got some references. You want repable reference, references? This is someone, a uh, leader of one of the, uh, the director from the residency I was in. This is just an artist friend of mine, Dio Warfield, established artist. This is a curator that I worked with. Okay, these are my references. I don't know if they ever checked them or not, but they're real references. Then they always ask for work examples. Okay, this is examples of my work. They're photographed well. I get my work documented from a photographer, not just iPhone. That's something that's also important when you want to really start selling reproductions. You want to really just start documenting all your work. Well, uh, you want it to look as good as possible. More work examples, whatever they say, if they say like five to eight, I'm gonna give them closer to the higher number. Uh, I might give them, they say five to eight, I probably give them seven. Like I give them kind of right off the max, but definitely not the minimum. Or sometimes I just give them all. And then now I do have a mural under my belt. So this is what I ended up doing for the belt line. The wall wasn't as tall and skinny as what I thought. It was actually more horizontal. So I actually put my daughter into the mural. Uh, it, it needed to be two faces as opposed to the one face that I had there at first. So now I really do got a real mural in, in my in my proposal. And then uh, I'm a curator. So I, I put in some curator uh, shows. That's I document everything. So yeah, I got some some actual videos on my shows to let you see exactly who I am. Even though this is just a mural project, I want to let you know who you're dealing with. Uh, so I threw just two of those. And then I got, sometimes they want your artist statement, your generic artist statement, and then a statement about the project. So this is the artist statement of interest that it's a statement specific to the project that I'm applying for. I went into why and the narrative of why I deserve this project, what I would do. I'm a Kansas native, you know, I'm black, <laughs> you know, I'm passionate about this, you know, uh, I'm selling them, you know? Uh, and I tell you too, I'm not the best writer either. Like some of these things I'm writing on my own. And even though I have hired writers, but the way I, I write for me is I can talk it better than I can write it. So I, I can talk about what I want to do. I can talk about my artist statement. I can talk about this. Sometimes it's hard to sit there and write it because my brain goes faster than what I'm writing. So what I do is I talk it into my iPhone. I record it. I talk to myself. I talk it out. And then I go back and listen to it and I write it from what I talked out. 
You'd be surprised if you think you can't write, but when you do it like that, it makes it so much easier. But you can talk about it. You might be talking for 10 minutes and you might over talk, but you go and you listen and you take out the good stuff and you write to what you talk. Uh, so that's that's like a cheat code for me to be able to write. Is then this is the actual project project that I submitted. It was they wanted this type of stuff. It was right after 2020. It was, I learned about the migration from Kansas. Uh, Manhattan, Kansas is right by military base. So I'm giving them what they, even they didn't ask for. I researched the area, and you know Buffalo Soldiers came from Kansas. A little history like. The first black people into the military were in Fort Riley, Kansas, which is right by here. So having black military is a big part of their story. Uh, Manhattan, Kansas is where K-State is. So it's also a college town. So I got a black graduate. Uh, this guy in the middle was the led the biggest migration after Reconstruction. After Reconstruction, when enslaved people got their freedom, the, they migrated to the Midwest more than anywhere. That's how Black Wall Street got formed. That's how Kansas ended. So this guy was part of that migration. So he's in there, started a church. That's the original church. Uh, you got the Exodus Dusters who had migrated. And then you got the 2020 protests on the right. I got it all in here. And then the uh, the site location was the, the location of the first Black public pool in Kansas. So that's why I got the Black kids in the pool. It's the site of the Black public pool. So. I gave them what they asked for. Uh, and I knew that this project was a uh, open to the public. Uh, anybody can go and they would judge the mural and you got the public voting for it. Now that's a slippery slope because when you got the public involved, this, it can go either which way. And a lot of these people, they may not be into art, but they into their neighborhood and they into the history of the neighborhood. So I'm catering to them. You're a military guy, I got you covered. You're education, you got you covered. You, you, you know people who was at their first pool, I got you covered. You know, I got it all. You, you cannot say no. Like this was like a slam dunk uh, the guy told me when they presented this to the public. And I, and I know it because it's my story, I'm black. I, I, know, I, I know what black people wanna hear. I just tapping into my grandmother, I'm tapping into my auntie. And that is my mother, the graduate is my mother. I'd be throwing my family into my murals low key. <laughs> uh, so again, I'm doing this with the client involved. Okay, that's 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 me laying that on my iPad. Okay, but again, I, they may not be artists, they may not be visual. I know the wall is gonna be on. Okay, I'm gonna show you exactly what it's gonna look like on that wall. Okay, now I'm going into Photoshop, I'm taking my drawing, I'm superimposing it onto the wall. They they can see it before I paint it, they, they, they can see it. The composition is there. These are the photos they gave me. I'm putting on the wall. They're not asking for this stuff. This is stuff that I do. I'm not saying I'm the only one that does it, but this is a difference maker and sometimes winter proposals because I'm, they're not having to imagine what I'm doing. I'm showing you exactly what I'm gonna do. Uh, you know, put that in there and I even broke it down into elevation. And what I'm really doing is I'm flexing. I'm showing my, comp my competence. I'm like, yo, this is, I got the skill. Like, you're judging me. Like, that's what they're doing. They're judging, can you pull this off? They ain't out there to waste their money. They wanna make sure they can do the right choice. I'm showing them, like, this is extra. Like, look at this guy, he's doing elevation. He knows what he's doing. And then I'm, put, I'm, I'm calling out all the key components into the mural. Okay, I'm making it like dummy proof. Okay, A, what's A? Paying homage to the side of the first black pool. B, celebrating black students. Okay, C, acknowledging Benjamin Papp Singleton. You ain't gotta figure this out, it's a roadmap. Like I'm, I'm giving you everything. Like I'm, I'm taking away any excuse you got to say no because I, I wanted this project. And it was actually a really good paying project too uh, for a small market. It was, I got more than, the, than I got at the Beltline for this. I mean, they put me on the news, they put me in the paper, that the small markets take care of you. And then, I, and then I got the budget, you know. Okay, I don't live there, round trip flight, lodging, food, art supplies, miscellaneous, art, feed, design, and labor. You know, it's always my bottom line. It's always gonna be the biggest thing I put in the budget. And sometimes they're gonna tell you, this wasn't a bell line. They told me what the max was. And anytime you tell me the max, I'm gonna make my budget go to the max. I'm not gonna leave no money on the table. Uh, so I'm gonna make the budget go to the max. 
you'd be surprised some people come under like now nah, i'm always going for the, the max budget you tell me the but you, if you got a scale i'm going to the end of the scale and i'm gonna tell you why i need all the money okay my trip my this that even though i might get a cheaper flight you don't need to know that you know uh i'm going to the max why not you know uh it's almost like dumb not to uh and again, if they tell me they're giving me less, I'm gonna let you tell me you're giving me less. But I'm gonna apply for the, the pot, you know. Uh, hey Eugene, I'm oh, sorry about that. I wanted to ask: um, Are there certain discussions or ways in which you get the uh, economic decision maker to reveal what that threshold is? What's that? In terms of the budget. Is there what? Is there what now? Like, is there like, do you just go right out and ask like, what's your budget? Or if they um, are kind of, they push back and they don't want to give you a number, um, you know, well, how do you most, handle those types of situations? Well, for most proposals, they're going to tell you what it is. Uh, a real job, when you're dealing with the city or you're dealing with a real organization, they're going to, they're not going to play around. They're, they're going to tell you what it is, but what they might have is a scale. They like like for the Beltline, the Beltline is just a unique entity because they the, the Beltline is a little different because they'll deal with they understand like different artists have different rates. So if they get a real big artist, they're gonna pay a higher rate. Uh if they got an emerging artist, they're gonna pay a lower rate. So the Beltline has some wiggle room. So they they may not necessarily put the budget up front, but they might have scale. They might say like 10 to 25 grand for a mural on a bell line or 10 to 30 grand. And if you're a newer artist, you probably may not go for the 30. You might say, okay, I, I'm gonna go for 15. But for most of these projects, they're gonna say, uh, you know, we got 20 grand for this mural. Uh, so you got to make a decision on, cause that, that helps you decide, do you even want to go for this proposal or not? Like you got to know the numbers, but they're yeah. still gonna say, put a budget together and if they say the mural's 20 grand and you put a budget together and you say in your budget come up to 16 or 15 grand, you're probably going to get a check for 15 or 16 grand. Uh, so when I put the budget together, I'm going to make it go to, I'm going to make it go to the max in that situation. Now, a situation like the bell line, when I know they got scale and they because they're dealing with emerging artists or something and I got to check myself and say where I am in my career, I may not go for the max. Uh, I might just be happy to get my first meal and I don't want to overshoot myself, I might be willing to do it for a little less. But so you just got to gauge on the client and, and what that client is uh, and how you tackle it. But most projects, they're going to tell you what they got to pay. So you're going to want to, uh, to go for the max. Now, if you're going for a private client that's like a restaurant and it's not a proposal situation, you got an opportunity to do the mural, those are the ones that are gonna try to uh, be like, you're gonna try to get the budget information out of them. Uh, that's not really a proposal situation, but in that situation, that's when you do wanna try to get them to say like, what's your budget? Like everyone don't wanna budge first. It's almost like showing you your, your cars first. like. If you hire me for a commission, one of the first questions I'm saying is, what's your budget? Uh, and I always think that they're, it's just human nature. They're going to tell me a whole lot less than what that real budget is. That's just the way I believe because that's how business is. So if I go to a restaurant, I say, what's your budget for this meal? I say, I got 3000 And I know you probably got at least eight. You know, you're trying to lowball me. So uh, I'm going to come in with a little higher. And then if they are adamant and they're good business people too, and they <laughs> a lot of business owners are, they probably going to get you to say first, uh, then I'm just going to go higher. I'm, I'm going to say, you know, even if I think they got six grand, I might say, you know, you know, I, I, I'm experienced at doing murals, you know, my budget is, is 10,000, even though I might be willing to do it for six and see what they say. And either they go agree or I might go back down to, to six. But these are just the art of negotiation that uh, you have to, you got to, you got to learn how to negotiate. And, and, uh, but that's different than proposals. A lot of proposals, there ain't no negotiation. The only thing that you can end up doing is leaving money on the table. They're going to tell you the range and you got to decide where you want to come in at that range. Uh, the belt line, it was my first mural. I wasn't really as confident and I was just wanting to get into the mural game. 
uh, like I said, I probably left some money on the table. Now that I, I got confidence with the Miro, with the Miro for the Douglas Academy, I say that I'm going after the whole pot. But it was also a different situation that it wasn't the bell line is a mural fest. They have a lot of murals and they're, and they're trying to get as much done with money. This was one project. So that money they have set aside, that's it. Like they have that to spend on this mural. If I don't take all that money, it's just going back into the city's funding and it's going to go to some foolishness or, or somebody else is going to take it off the top. Uh, so I'm going after all. So you just got to, you got to start to understand who your client is. And that's going to determine how you engage with them because every, every client is different. But when you're dealing with city money, they're, they're upfront. Uh, they're pretty upfront. So you kind of want to go on a mural project. You want to go for the most amount in the curator project. There's a whole lot of scale in that. Uh, you want to go to your event. So like, like elevate every year, they have a lot. They, it goes up to 45 grand. That don't mean you just go to, the 45 grand if you're not coming up with a 45 grand i did if your idea is a 10 grand i did and you can still make some money then come in at 10 uh because the, ex the more money you go after the expectations get raised uh but for a mural it's a little different uh projects is you're going at the scale of the project uh if you're trying to rent it out the fox you know that's going to be an expensive project so you might want to go for 45 but it all depends, and, and some of that depends on your reputation. Uh, so if you don't have no reputation and you really don't have nothing on your CV, you might want to, for an event, you might want to come in at a lower, like, okay, they're giving out 45, I'm going to ask for 10, I'm going to ask for 15, and I'm going to pop off and get into the game. Uh, but once you you start to, like I said, know your worth a little more, like if I'm coming into the situation, I'm coming in close to the max uh, because I, I just I feel like I come to a point where I earned it. Uh, so it just depends. And that's just kind of an honest assessment you got to do for yourself, but you don't want to, the murals are about, I mean, the proposals are about the money and I'm always going to talk about the money, but you got to understand like it's a marathon and you don't want to just chase the bag and end up with no bag, you know, like you want to get into the game and you don't want to hit them over the head all the time. The first time around, like, uh, you just want to get into the game and get some money and get experienced and you want to build upon it so you can get more and more money later. Uh, so you just got to take an honest assessment of where you are and what you think your worth is and honestly what you think you can pull off. So sometimes you just want to get into the game and say, you know what, I'm going to come in and not really and save some other money to, so they can give it to some other projects and I can pull this off for this amount of money and I can make some money. You don't ever be in a situation with these funders and you don't make no money. Uh, but if you say like, if I, if I just walk away with $3,000, I'm good, you know, then, then that's the decision you make uh, and put all the money into the event. Uh, you, you're not gonna ever get one project and that's gonna make your life and make your career. I don't care if you got a project with Oprah Winfrey, that one project ain't gonna do it. You gotta get more and more. So don't just try to blow your load and, and get over on people and know that you haven't managed no $50,000 project and you ain't managed a $30,000 project and you end over your head. And you can't just always throw money at situations. Like you can have money to hire people. It can still be a disaster. Uh, what you want to do is be successful and put yourself in the best situation of success so you can repeat this process every year, every season, because these proposals come around every time. Uh, so you want to know that I can bank 20 or 30 grand every year off of these same entities. So what you wanna do is do a good job, do a good job uh, and not, and, and, and get the money, <laughs> but don't just lust over the money and, and have you asked out to where you ain't gonna never see that money again. Uh, you know, you can keep drawing from the same well, like Fulton County, I can keep going to them every single year because they know I'm gonna do what I say. And if I take a little hit on the chin, the first time, that's fine because I'm gonna get, I'm gonna come back next year and keep a little more in my pocket and next year a little more in my pocket. And, and if you do that, you're gonna build a career. Uh, the one project is not gonna do nothing for you uh, in the long run. Uh, so that's, that's just something you gotta make an assessment. So I can't answer that for everybody, uh, but you just gotta take an honest assessment about you know where you are and, uh, and start to know your work. 
Hello, Eugene. And this is Vanessa. So um, I know it's getting a little bit late. So I was going to try to just see if anybody had any other questions. And we have to wrap this up soon. OK. Yeah, because I'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Anybody have any questions? Anything Anything to ask? Or I just wanted to see if we can see a little bit of your pitch deck. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'll go into the pitch deck, and then we'll do one last quick round of questions. Uh, now, pitch decks are. I got a maker's mark. I've done a couple of them, but this is one of my winning ones in this maker's mark. Last year I had an event called Remarkable. So I got some insight that maker's mark is trying to tap into the black air community in Atlanta. I said, okay, that's all I need to know. They go see from me. Uh, so I put a proposal together. And again, like I said, I'm catering to the ego. Boom, I got your brand right there. Hey, I, I'm going in your colors. Hey, I'm paying attention maker's mark. Like, okay, you got this label. I got me a label right here, you know, it's subtle, uh, but they get it. Okay, I came with a campaign called Leave Your Mark. I ended up calling it Remarkable, uh, but this is what I pitched to them. Now I got to sell myself. Why the hell they go deal with me? Okay, I don't want to I don't want to do just an event. I wanted to do a whole six week social media campaign. That's exactly what I did. I want to I want to make your dollar stretch. Okay, boom, then we got our opening, then we go close with a closing talk. Okay, three phases. I'm breaking it down. You know, this is exactly what I'm gonna do bang for your buck this was a you know COVID was still there so i threw this in here and i and sign of the times i did it but also threw it in there because i know they're concerned about that okay it's our zip we're here to cdc guidelines and limited number of occupants you know that was necessary at that time i did this in 2021 i'm letting you know like i'm hip to what's going on okay let your brand know that you're here and your brand supports the arts community you know blah 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 and then, uh, okay, social media campaign. Okay, now I'm catering to them. I got to put a little more work into my uh, pitch deck campaign. I'm an artist, I'm doing art. Okay, I'm gonna draw these illustrations. I took my time to draw. Uh, I'm not just using photography. Okay, social media campaign. This is an example video storyboard. I just drew these on my iPad. I can bang these out in like an hour, these drawings. Uh, so I'm showing you, I'm an artist. This is art. The campaign, the pitch is gonna look like an artist did it. Okay, breaking down the three week social media campaign, focus on six to nine videos of people telling stories. Uh, I, I like narrative. I wanted to do this visual storytelling. Uh, storytelling is our roots and wings. Uh, it's part of black culture. I wanted to monetize storytelling. That was my idea. Uh, social media campaign. Okay, we go be doing brand placement. They wanna sell liquor. That's all they care about. They want to sell product. This is America. This is capitalism. Okay, we go show your brand. I drink bourbon. I am not fronting. You know, like I'd I be true too. Like I drink whiskey. This ain't me capping. You know, uh, so boom, the bottles right there. I can date. You know, I, I can tell they 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 were loving this. I wasn't in the room. Okay, artist connection. These makers mark would be linked with at least one fine artist. I have a past connection with them. Blah blah blah. I got an artist painting. Uh, initially, this is me, like I said, I was shooting for the moon, shooting a little higher. I wanted my mark makers to be from different industries and I'm in those Atlanta. So I wanted to have, do a spotlight on Rico Wade, you know, but I got, boom, potential mark maker. This is what I'm proposing. I have no connections with Rico Wade, but I know some people who do that if it would have went down, I could have hollered up. I would holler at my man, New Face. Uh, Rico Wade, I would love to do a story on him because you always hear about Outcast, blah, blah, blah. I wanted to to talk about him and his legacy. So did an illustration a week away, not just a photo. I'm an artist. I want to sell this art. Uh, I wanted to do one on politicians. I wanted to have channel out Stacey Abrams, potential mark maker. It's a proposal. I ain't saying this is going to happen. I'm saying this is what I'm proposing. No lies. I would love to have Stacey Abrams. OK, then I want to I want to uh, have an artist. Okay, the artist I want to spotlight is Charlie Palmer. Charlie's my boy. He would have been down. That's the easy sell. Uh, got Charlie. You see, I, I was trying to tap different in, uh, in industries. I had politics, also education with Stacy. I had music. I had visual artists. Then I have influencer, which is also an artist, but I had him as an influencer. Uh, Maya Bailey. Maya's my boy. I can do a segment on him, potential mark maker. So I had ones that I had direct access to, and then I had my dream people. Uh, and then, okay, then we go have an art opening. Okay, we go have a DJ. I'm not gonna go talk about the DJ. I did a little quick drawing of a DJ because I want my proposal to look good. I'm ass kissing here. I wanna show them I'm confident. 
okay, this is how it's going to look. We're going to have some built up walls. Cause I, at the time I didn't have a gallery. I didn't know where this event was going to be. So I'm basically thinking I'm going to have to rent out a space. So I'm proposing, Hey, people looking at art, they can get it. You know, they're, they're actually seeing it. Okay. We're going to have a live painting wall. Okay. Uh, I'm showing you live paint art wall. There's gonna be people there painting these mark makers. Uh, this is my proposal. I actually didn't even do that, but it's, I'm shooting for the moon here. Okay, we go have some HBCU steppers at the event. It's all part of black culture parts. I go to Clark, try to get some steppers. You know, I'm proposing. I don't know what the hell they go bite to, but I'm, I'm selling them my vision. Okay, artist talk, okay. We got people looking like they had an artist talk. Okay. Uh, panel discussion and artist talk. And then you got a person artist talk pointing at the work. And then, okay, a little bit about me. I went into my whole proposal then. And, and, and now I can structure it the way my own. And it's not a, it's not a proposal. I, I make the roadmap. I'm curating what they see. So all of that, all of that, all of that. Now I'm talking about me. Cause I know they probably already liked the idea. Now about me, I'm future dead artist. This is what we've done. We serve our community. Uh, we believe some of my mission statements. I got some video links of past shows that they can see I did. Okay, now they definitely want to know you got somewhat of a team uh, when they're handing out a lot of money. They don't want to really give it to one person. Okay, I'm gonna show you who's gonna help me out. It's gonna be me, uh, Natasha, and I got my content manager and my writer, but I also got my other people. Uh, listed. I got a project manager. I got photographer. I got videographer because the video was part of my proposal. I'm letting you know I got everybody to make this happen. And then this is a big one that they always want. Why should they deal with you? Why? And again, I say partner with us, not why sponsor me. Why do you want to partner with me? We can go on and on, but here's four reasons. You know, why demographic of guests and followers? We're on the forefront of cool. We are an important part of the community and we are brand loyal. And then I got little descriptions on why they why they want to partner with me. Makers Mark don't need me, you know, but they 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 do though. I'm telling them that they do, but they don't, but they do, you know. Uh, proposed time frame because it's a pitch. This this ain't no. This can be any time. This is my proposed time. I proposed doing it in February. <laughs> this didn't actually happen until September. It took a long time to get the money. Uh, so I was going to do it as part of Black History Month, but. It doesn't matter. We can do it any time of the year. That's also the ideas. You got to have a lot of wiggle room in your idea. You got to be able to pivot. And then I broke it down. Three week social media campaign. I'm giving them a roadmap. I'm letting them know like this is thought out. Like this ain't no like, hey, I got this idea. Like cooking. Like, nah, this is ready to go. All I need is you to send me the money. I didn't have no gallery. I had proposed Mason Fine Art. I ended up doing it at Zucat. I kind of wanted to keep it all black as possible. I, talked to Najee into doing it there. It's actually one of the first exhibits they had in two years uh, because of COVID, they were closed. And then I even had like a, a philanthropy charitable contribution that I was thinking about doing, but I never did, but I I was honest in the intent, but also I'm selling, you know? Uh, you know, I wanna get some money back. This didn't happen, but at the time I really wanted it to happen. But again, this is a, I'm proposing this. I just really trying to apply to I want the money. I want them to, to give it to me. And then instead of like a CV, I just got like notes of things that I did more in a creative way. 20 fine art expeditions or blah, 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 hundred dollars in marching arts, art so earn a certain line of community. It's kind of just bullet points of things I've done uh, without that official CV because that'll bore them to death. Like, uh, so this is a pitch deck. It's a little more sexier. It's a little more of me being grandiose and you don't see a budget because my uh, my partner, I had an inside track in the room and he proposed to do a budget after they bit on the idea. Uh, so through his insight, I didn't put a budget, but we were going for big money. They didn't give me all the money I wanted. So of course the, I did scale back. I didn't have no steppers. I didn't have some of this stuff, but I still gave them the meat of the idea. And instead of me chasing Rico Wade and Stacey Abrams, I just kept it all artists. I, I just came to a point, I said, let me stick to what I know. I have a great relationship with artists. I did this the remarkable campaign on artists in the Atlanta community. It was a really good thing. I had like Sue Ross, I had Alfred Conte. I, I did their stories, uh, the storytelling, that's what it was about. Uh, and we had, and it ended with an event. So then you see the same thing very similar 
the thing about pitch decks, I can flip the idea and pitch it right to somebody else. So I also had an interact, uh, I had a, a with, with FM because the liquor reps don't usually just deal with one liquor. They deal with a lot of liquors. So I knew Maker's Mark wanted to tap into the black creative community. So that's what I gave them. I wasn't trying to go out to my dream job. I was trying to get these affiliations and I was also trying to make some money. Uh, so they wanted black, I gave them black. Now FN Liquor wanted to support the queer community. Okay, I'm gonna give you that. But I'm not queer, so I don't front. I, I teamed, I collaborated with a, a queer community, my friend who uh, has a queer organization. So now it's free to dead artists teams with ATLQBTQ. So it's official. Uh, it's not me just trying to, you know, take advantage of the community. I'm not a part of it, even when I support. I, I partner with a, uh, someone who is in there because I'm, I want to be true to anything that I do because ain't no money worth selling us so. Uh, so I came up with this campaign. I'm starting to understand for FN vodka. Now this is vodka. Boom. They got, I figured out they got bottles that look like the, the queer flag. So boom, I put that into the brand and they, uh, and I had this campaign. I'm starting to understand, you see, very similar to the maker's mark, but it was a six week social media campaign, art exhibit, artist talk clothing, same phases. Uh, it's just rebranded into their color palette. Hey, same, same drawings. I pitched these companies at the same time and, 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 was, and stood back and say, who go bite? Okay, remember this? Okay, now I got an effing bottle instead of the maker's mark. They don't need to know that. It's told different people in the room. And that's all this advantage of drawing digitally. So I did these digitally so I can just do that. Uh, now, at first, I just had flowers back there. And I, I put in the bottles when I did the DJ. Same drawing. Very similar campaign, but different. Just one was geared to the queer community. One was geared to black storytelling, uh, did a little instead of eight into instead of uh, steppers from uh, black colleges. I had gender neutral cigarette girls with the drinks, a lit up dance floor. You know, I'm bringing in the queer colors without the flag. Uh, artist talk closing, same thing. This is the same. The team changed because I partnered with a uh, founder of a queer community, but pretty much the same. Why well, partner with us? Same. So I can take the same thing and now I can do it for Nike. Now I can do it for something else. I'll just change it up. Uh, and the same thing with the proposals. I can do a lot of the same proposals and just change it up, change up what I'm proposing. So once you do one, they get easier. The first one is your hardest one. And then they get simpler after that. So I'll talk you out of death. Any quick questions before we have to cut out?